these days, with three modern adaptations of Spider-Man in film, a vast amount of television shows, and a couple of games here and there, you'd imagine that the character may tread over itself a few times. Maybe you've come across some similarities between different versions of the character, whether it's villains, narrative threads, or pretty much anything. When you have so many adaptations of one certain thing that all relatively stay true to the concept of the original source material, you're definitely bound to have some crossover. And that's the problem I have with Gwen Stacy. Gwen Stacy does not work anymore in Spider-Man media. But before we get to that, I'd like to invite you to subscribe. This channel is dedicated to giving you Spider-Man content, so make sure you're subbed if you love the wall crawler as much as I do. I know you won't regret it. What the f- There have been many versions of the character of Gwen Stacy. You may recognize the likes of Spider-Gwen and Emma Stone's version of the character from the Amazing Spider-Man movies as the most popular versions of the character. Throughout Spider-Man's history, Gwen Stacy has been a character that has become a beloved icon in the fandom. However, I believe that the story of Gwen Stacy is becoming less valued as time goes on, and the more that she gets used in Spider-Man media, the more her story becomes redundant. And it's for one simple reason. That's right, her death. But before we explore the reason as to why I feel like Gwen Stacy's story and her death is becoming really redundant in Spider-Man media, we really have to look first at why she was killed in the first place. Gwen Stacy was killed in issue 121 of The Amazing Spider-Man, which came out in 1973. She was killed by the Green Goblin, aka Spider-Man's arch nemesis, as a massive turning point for the character of Peter Parker. However, her death was never actually initially planned according to Stan Lee, which is really crazy considering he is the one who created the character. Jerry Conway, the writer that took over from Stan Lee, wanted to take the Spider-Man character in a different direction. You see, initially Stan Lee wrote Gwen Stacy as this perfect girl, someone that Peter Parker would never seemingly ever be able to date. Peter Parker was a nerd, a loser, and imperfect in every single way. However, Gwen Stacy was portrayed as beautiful and perfect. Not only by her looks, but by her smarts, Gwen Stacy was written perfectly in every single way. While at the time, this may have shown that the nerd can still get the girl in the end, which was one of the many crucial themes of the early books, it also presented a massive problem going forward. The stories following Peter and Gwen's get-together seem to lack any sort of depth, especially on the Gwen Stacy side of things. Yeah, Gwen Stacy lost her father, and that was something for her character to rely off of, and there was a couple of things here and there that Gwen did get down the line. But her initial character that was introduced in the early comic books never really had any sort of depth to her. She was mainly reduced to just being the pretty girl with no real substance to back her up. Instead, the most interesting female character in The Amazing Spider-Man at the time was given to another very popular love interest in Spider-Man media, Mary Jane Watson. Mary Jane was far more interesting than Gwen ever was, right from her introduction. MJ's character had rich depth to her past. Unlike many adaptations of Mary Jane from recent years, in the comics, MJ was a party girl. However, it was subsequently revealed that her confident facade was to cover up the fact that she had an abusive background. Her family life, especially with her father, wasn't the greatest to say the least. Thus, MJ's character suddenly had something to hide, something to protect, almost like Peter did with his secret identity. Thus, when Jerry Conway took over the title, he noticed immediately that Peter and Mary Jane had far more in common than Peter did with Gwen Stacy, and subsequently, they would be a better couple together. Thus, to allow Peter to move forward as a character, Gwen Stacy was killed in service of setting him up with Mary Jane as a future love interest. And... Obviously, that was the right decision, as Peter and Mary Jane have gone on to become the power couple of Marvel Comics. But this is where the problem with Gwen Stacy lies. In the moment that Conway killed Gwen, her death immediately became the most interesting thing about her. Which brings us on to the adaptations of her character. Whenever Gwen is adapted strictly from her comic book counterpart, like she was in the Amazing Spider-Man films, her death 
is all her character is leading up to. Gwen's death is to be in service of Peter Parker and his character. And while Gwen's death may be a great way to allow Peter to grow as a character, Gwen really doesn't have anything much to show other than the death that she will eventually succumb to. Which is why whenever Gwen Stacy is introduced in Spider-Man Media accurately to her comic book counterpart, it's almost immediately negated by the fact that the audience know that she is going to die. It has become so realized throughout the fandom that even general audiences know the fate of Gwen Stacy as soon as she's introduced. This has been cemented as the conclusive end of Gwen Stacy's story since Conway wrote the death of Gwen Stacy. And the more that the audience are familiar with her relevance and impact to the story, the less impactful her death will be, thus rendering her character obsolete. Although not made specifically clear, I think it's very obvious that Across the Spider-Verse also stressed that the death of a loved one, similar to the death of a police captain close to Spider-Man, is a canon event. Meaning that not just the fans, but the creatives behind the films and shows are also recognizing that Gwen's fate is always to die. In every other universe, Gwen Stacy falls for Spider-Man. And in every other universe, it doesn't end well. And when a character's death is the most important thing about them, doesn't that make them boring? Like, that's a serious question. Um, Lewis, you're forgetting that there are multiple adaptations of Gwen Stacy that don't kill her and do give her significant character traits. That's what adaptations are for. Yes, you are right. And that is definitely what adaptations are for. But I still have a problem with this. One common misconception in recent times is that Gwen Stacy as a character has been adapted past her death. And I'd like to argue that that has never been done with any conviction in the slightest. For example, probably the main example of Gwen Stacy done successfully without killing her off is Spectacular Spider-Man. However, Spectacular Spider-Man's version of the character has Gwen's whole story revolve around two central things. Number one, her secret love for Peter, and number two, her underlying securities of conventional beauty, which are uncovered later in the season. Now, one of those things is a trait of every version of Gwen Stacy, and the other is a very loose spin on a Mary Jane concept, and I'll let you figure out which one is which. What I'm trying to say is that Spectacular Spider-Man Gwen Stacy emulates very similar qualities to that of a traditional Mary Jane from the comics. And while Mary Jane was in the show, the later seasons never got made, so it was never made very clear if they were going to diverge or stay close to what MJ's story was from the comics. It could have very much been the fact that they were planning for MJ's qualities to be translated into the Gwen Stacy character. And yes, it is a loose spin on the Mary Jane story from the comics, but the idea of a character hiding their insecurities is something that Mary Jane has in the comic books. Another example of Gwen Stacy that steals Mary Jane-like qualities is Spider-Man 3. In fact, I'd argue that MJ and Gwen in Spider-Man 3 practically swap characters entirely, which is really weird to see if you've read the comic books. In Spider-Man 3, Gwen is popular, a party girl, and dates the cool guy, which is quite literally what MJ is in the comics, and Gwen is pretty much what MJ appears to be in Spider-Man 3. And this is the most obvious case of the Gwen Stacy character stealing traits from Mary Jane Watson. So if Gwen's fate isn't to die, it's very clear that a lot of writers like to steal the qualities of Mary Jane and put them into the Gwen Stacy character. And my main issue with this is that isn't Gwen Stacy, that's just Mary Jane. If you don't already have Mary Jane introduced, why not just make Gwen Stacy Mary Jane? Because that's literally what MJ is. That is literally MJ's character. However, there is one outlier in all of this. What about Spider-Gwen? Even though I think Spider-Gwen is a great character and a very interesting concept, I still don't think that she proves my argument wrong. Although many other adaptations of Gwen dip into Mary Jane for key components to her character to give Gwen a purpose other than her death, the character of Spider-Gwen is so different to the point where she isn't even Gwen Stacy. Spider-Gwen might as well not be Gwen Stacy at all. Of course, she is, and the idea of Gwen getting spider powers is a very interesting concept, but in reality, the original Gwen Stacy character is nothing like Spider-Gwen. Spider-Gwen is as far from Gwen Stacy as Peter Parker is from a stable long-term relationship, okay? Spider-Gwen is in a band, almost has a very closed off and punk rock type personality, which has been accentuated and popularized by the Spider-Verse films. 
Whereas Gwen Stacy from the comics is the pretty nerd who likes science. So Spider-Gwen might as well not be Gwen at all. In fact, she might as well be an entirely different character altogether. But I don't want to be all negative about Spider-Gwen. She may not conform to the regular characteristics of Gwen Stacy, but I think she is a fresh way to reinvent the character moving forward, even though she may be nothing like the original source material. And that is the beauty of adaptation. However, my point still stands. Using Gwen Stacy traditionally in a Spider-Man story doesn't work anymore, and that's what this video is about. I'm not trying to say that no version of Gwen Stacy works, because I'm sure characters like Spider-Gwen will carry on to be adapted and will carry on to evolve into the future. However, when it comes to the traditional version of Gwen Stacy, a version of Gwen Stacy that doesn't steal traits from characters like Mary Jane Watson, they just don't work because Gwen's death is the most interesting part about her. And when you introduce a comic accurate Gwen Stacy and the actual Gwen Stacy that we know from the comics, people automatically assume that she's going to die, which pretty much reduces the point of her character altogether. Because like I said, the most important thing about Gwen's character is the fact that she that is always going to be her fate. That is Gwen Stacy. Unless, obviously, you pull qualities from other characters like Mary Jane Watson, which many versions of the character seem to do. But on that point, why not just use Mary Jane and leave Gwen Stacy to the past? I personally do think we are currently experiencing a shift in the fandom with this exact phenomenon. Personally, right now, I think there is a transformation currently happening on what we recognize as the Gwen Stacy character. I reckon that in 10 to 15 years, Spider-Gwen will become the all more popular version of the character, leaving Gwen Stacy behind for good. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Gwen Stacy became romanticized because of her death, and I don't think people realize that that was the only interesting thing about her character. But since people are becoming all too familiar with the death of Gwen Stacy, writers, filmmakers, and storytellers won't be able to get away with Gwen Stacy without subjecting audiences to a less impactful story, due to the obvious nature of the character's conclusive end. Despite Spider-Gwen taking a more Spider-Man-like approach to her character, at least there are going to be new and interesting stories explored with Gwen Stacy to come. And at least we do get to have our cake and eat it too. We get to have Gwen Stacy, but we also get something fresh, something new, and something different. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to hit a like on it and also make sure to subscribe and make sure to turn the bell notifications on so you do not miss any more uploads when I post them. This is a Spider-Man channel. If you love Spider-Man, make sure you subscribe because we post Spider-Man content, opinion pieces, pretty much anything on this channel to do with the wall crawler. We post every single Wednesday and Saturday, so make sure you are subscribed. If you want to support me as a creator, the best way that you can do that is through my members page. It's literally 99 pence a month, which I think is like $1.20, and you get every single video I post early, you get exclusive community posts, and you get influence over upcoming videos, you get all good stuff like that, priority reply to comments, everything. Without the way, thanks for watching, I'll catch you guys in the next one, take care, and peace.